And we focus not on necessarily the obvious visual aspects of it, but on a deeper level of it satisfying the goals of both the organization that's creating it and the individual users. And it's a case of, you know, as the old saying goes, not wanting to put the cart before the horse. Um, you know, the visual things matter and they can help improve a website and they can help achieve the goals that you're going after, but the goals are the important thing. So let's focus on those. Later on, we'll get to the means of achieving those goals. And that's really what the design process does. The design process, we kind of gave an overview last time where we talked about it occurring in five phases. The strategy, scope, structure, skeleton, and surface. All right. And now we're going to look in each of those phases a little more uh, detail. All right. We'll do that possibly today. Um, possibly we'll get through it all today. Um, after we get through with this, we'll talk about a little more in detail of what some of the visual things that we can do on a page to help uh, enhance our goals. We'll talk a little bit more about the surface level. And we'll sort of talk about how you will go about developing a website by creating sort of a template pe page and then cloning that page several times. So we'll kind of intermix those two discussions. And that will either start the end of today um, or um, on Thursday. Now, um, one, of the, uh, one of the things I mentioned, um, or I believe is mentioned, is the opportunity to do a project for a nonprofit or something like that. I'm actually going to talk to someone during our lab today to see if their project is something that's suitable. And possibly they will be in uh, our class on Thursday to talk about that for any of you that are interested in that. We'll see how it goes. It might be, I don't really know anything about her project until I talk to her today. So it might be something that's a perfect fit for this class or it might be something that's not really a fit for this class. So I'll just have to see. Uh, but I'll keep you posted. All right. At any rate, with that in mind, I, I think it's always good to have a road map of where you're going before you, you take off. So um, again, to sort of reiterate, strategy, scope, structure, skeleton, and surface. The first is the first phase is about strategy. And strategy is about a couple of things. It's about defining your audience and it's about defining the goals both for your users and for the organization. And again, I'm using the word organization to mean whoever you're making the website for. I mean, it could be a company, it could be a nonprofit, it could be just an individual, you know. So don't confuse that and say, hey, I'm doing a personal portfolio site. Who's the organization? Well, you're the organization then, all right, in that case. Thing to keep in mind is the more precise that you can define these things, the better off you're going to be because that will allow you to focus. All right? Focus is such a key word in, in, in design and in graphic design and in website design. All right? The ability to be able to focus your users in a particular direction is important. Um, I read a book and I don't remember the, don't remember the title of it, but it was um, a key word in it was attention. All right? And these days, if you think about all the different inputs that we have, we have stuff on Facebook, we have emails, we have websites, we have mobile sites. There's a lot of things that are fighting for your attention. All right? And as a result, being able to grab someone's attention and keep it is important. And another way of saying attention is focus, to keep someone focused on what it is they're looking for. 
Now, what I'm going to do as I discuss these sections, I'm going to look at the requirements for the project, which I have a couple documents on ANGEL, and I'm also going to look at a sample that I created for a hypothetical project. All right. Um, in this phase, you decide what your website's going to be about. Now, in some cases, that's defined for you, right? If your friend runs a neighborhood restaurant, all right, and comes to you and says, can, I define, uh, can you create a website for me? Then it's defined what, what it is to do. And in fact, in most cases, that's going to be the case. You're either going to work for a company that needs a website or needs enhancements to their website, or someone's going to you know, approach you as a freelancer to do some work. And in either case, you know, the, the project is sort of given to you. At least a vague notion of what the project is is given to, uh, to you. Now, in this case, for, for this class project, you know, you get to make up your own. All right? And I've had people say that's the hardest thing is deciding what to do. If you're having trouble with that, talk to me and we'll figure something up. You know, I'll open the dictionary or the encyclopedia and point to something and we'll randomly pick something. It's more important to pick something and to get in working on it than to agonize over the perfect idea for a project for this class. All right. Uh, again, you know, that, that's something that, that definitely, you know, I, I hear that at least of several times uh, each semester. So, you know. I, I hope to pick some, I hope you pick something that you're somewhat interested in because I find that people devote more time to something that they're interested in. There's a guy who did his project a few years back on his motorcycles. Well, this guy loved his motorcycles. He was not going to put his motorcycles on an inferior web page. All right? So he worked hard to make sure his pages were worthy enough to deserve to showcase his motorcycles. All right? So I hope the same sort of thing is with you, too, that whatever you pick is something that you have an interest in and something that um, you'll, you know, will, will motivate you uh, to do a good job. Let me pull up the documents that are in ANGEL that are relevant here. I don't remember how many documents I have relating to this, but we'll, we'll pull them up. And I am sure that you've all read these, so I'll only briefly cover them. Looking out amongst the audience for any sign of reaction to that statement. Okay. Sometimes I get chuckles when I say that. You folks didn't chuckle, which either means that you have a, a more of a poker face or... You have read it, so you didn't find it particularly. All right, we'll look at these three documents. Project overview is really Just a description of what the project should be and what you're going to be graded on. All right. A couple things to note. Final project should contain six to eight pages, each containing a reasonable amount of content for web pages. All right. What do I mean by reasonable amount? I mean, you know, if you have a page that has a photograph and one sentence on it, that might not be a reasonable amount. I mean, the amount that you would typically, f yeah, well, all right, right, right. Uh, I, I hesitate to give, like, really very specific criteria because a lot of these things depend on the particular project that you're working on, all right? Um, I'm just saying that it should look, if I look at it, it should look like, hey, this is a kind of page I could actually find on the web. All right, that has about, about as much content as a typical web page does. All right. Um, and six to eight, uh, again, I hesitate to give numbers, but a lot of students um, 
sort of want them so that they know for sure. And it's also better for me because, you know, you'll have some students that will do one page and they'll say, well, that's all I needed to serve my goals. And it's like, well, I don't think you're trying too hard on that one. But anyhow, six to eight pages um, and um, reasonable amount of content per page. The goal is threefold, to be technically sound. In other words, your HTML code is good. It works. All right? You've done a good job separating your CSS from your HTML. The links work. The images work. All right? It's well designed. In other words, the visual design of the page helps direct the user's focus to the content and helps them find the stuff that they're interested in finding and complements the theme of the site. You know, um, I had a student, real good student, back several semesters ago in this class, and they did uh, their project on, like, the, the most... How would I phrase this? The most heavy of all heavy metal sort of bands, you know. And if he did that site, and he did it in the colors of, you know, lavender and pink, you know, you're chuckling already. I mean, that wouldn't make sense because that wouldn't fit the content. So the design should match the content, and the design should be such to focus you on the stuff. And we'll talk more about the visual language um, as we wrap this section up. And it should effectively communicate the intended message. Now, in order to effectively communicate the intended message, we need to know a few things, right? We need to know what that message is that you intend to communicate, what the goals are that you have in creating the site, what the goals your expected users have in creating the site, all right? And then we can assess that. And the more specific you can do this, the better that you're going to be. Two deliverables. In other words, you're going to turn in two things. A design document with a prototype and a final deliverable. All right. The design document. Strategy section. In this section, you define the goals for your site. Oh, well, looky there. This I would consider poor design, by the way. That the fact that I roll my mouse down to make it go from side to side, that's not a very intuitive thing. I guess I got it to work, but, well, you know. Anyhow, when you define the goals, keep in mind the goals should be goals that are specific to your content, not just restating general basic good web design principles. For example, don't put as one of your goals, do not put as one of your goals, the site should be user friendly. Of course it should be user friendly, right? You know, do you think it's an option to make your site rude and insulting to your users? You know, No, it's not. All right? That's just basic good sense, basic just good web design. Likewise, the site should have clear navigation. Well, yeah, it's going to have, it's going to need clear navigation, right? So that the users can find the stuff that they're looking for. So don't just basically restate what I would say are common sense or, or basic web design principles. But instead, speak specifically about your topic. And I'll show you an example of that um, in a minute here. You should focus, this sentence is important, you should focus instead about specifically what the users would hope to gain from visiting your site. All right? So, what are you going to put in this section? We talked about goals, we talked about users, and so on. I want a little paragraph just describing what your site is about, just as a, just as a basic overview, you know. A prioritized list of three goals for your project. And when I say three of your goals, I mean three of the organization or hypothetical organization's 
goals for this. A prioritized list of three user goals of this. Lastly, and this is a tricky one, and this it's not really tricky, but it's the one that people kind of, you know, I don't know, furrow their brow or roll their eyes or something. I want you to create three user personas. Now, we'll see an example of this in a minute. What do I mean by a user persona? I mean a description of a typical user that's going to be visiting your site. All right. Too often in web development, people talk about the user, the user, as though there's one person or one type of person that is going to be visiting your site. That's not true. There's going to be a lot of different people visiting your site. And they're going to have different goals, right? You know, there's what? There's 7 billion people in the world. You know, 7 billion different individuals that all have different backgrounds and different goals and so on and so forth. Well, we can develop a website that's going to accommodate all 7 billion of them. But what we can do is look at sort of representative types of people who are going to be visiting your site and sort of come to conclusion about what their goals are going to be when visiting your site. And we talked a little bit about this last week when I talked about who are people that are going to be visiting LC's website. There's going to be current students visiting the site. There's going to be uh, high school students that are visiting the site. There's going to be uh, people that want to change careers that are vi visiting the site. There might be businesses that want to train their folks vi visiting the site, and so on and so forth. So. That's a list of different categories of people. And there might be some overlap as far as what their goals are, but there might not be. All right? There might not be. Um, a high school student, for example, may be interested in the degree programs. All right? Maybe interested in getting a, a, uh, either a two-year degree or, or through the university partnership, getting a four-year degree or something along those lines. Someone switching careers, I've had people in, in my class that have had, um, I don't know if I've had any PhDs in my class, but I've definitely had people that have master's degrees in their class, uh, in, in this class, all right? And you know what? They may not really want a two-year degree in web development or whatever. They may just want to pick up a few classes here and there to sort of augment their already, th their background. And, and their schooling. So for them, maybe a degree is less important. Maybe they're just interested in maybe a certificate, certifying that they've taken a, a, a sequence of classes in web development or whatever. All right. So different people might have different goals visiting your site. So what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to come up with three kinds of personas. In other words, three representative people that are going to be visiting your site and you're going to try to view the world and your website through their eyes as you progress. In other words, what would help this person in achieving their goals? What are this person's goals? And so on. I'm only asking you to come up with three goals, three user goals for this project, but you could actually come up with a list of goals for each persona. All right? We have small enough of a site, and there probably will be enough of an overlap that I want you to just consider um, three types of users and a total of three user goals. All right, let's look at my example here. And in my example, I decided I'm going to do a Legends of Jazz website. And there's my overdue, or overview, rather. And it's a basic overview of the site and a statement of why I'm creating the site, promoting an art form that I care a lot about, okay? And I sort of narrow the focus a little bit, right? I aim to create a site that people that don't know a lot about jazz can visit and learn more about the great musicians. This will be geared towards Listeners and not musicians and novices as opposed to experts. All right. 
So notice what I've done. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about what my goals are, but I'm making them more specific. In other words, I'm not just doing a website about jazz. I'm doing a website about jazz for listeners that are not experts. Now, I don't mention it in here, but I guess my um, audience is also, you know, adults, not, not young kids, all right? I mean, so from, you know, teenagers and up. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to aim to make this interesting to, like, kindergarten students or, or first grade students. So I didn't really say that, but that would be something good I could have added to this, too. I mean, you can imagine, you can have two websites about jazz that will be totally different. If I was gearing my website towards musicians, I might talk about musical theory. I might talk about what about jazz distinguishes it from classical music or uh, popular music or folk music. I might talk about um, technical aspects of the instrument. I might talk about different kinds of saxophone reeds that there are. I might talk about different amplifiers for guitars. It's going to be a totally different site. For a listener, they probably don't care about that. They probably don't care what kind of read a particular musician played on a particular track or what the difference in sound is or whatever. A listener is going to want just information appropriate for their interests. The other thing I said is, is novices and not experts. I mean, there are people that know jazz music up, down, and sideways that are interested if just today a new recording was discovered in the vaults of some recording studio of some great jazz musician from the 20s. And they're going to want to know about that, right? And they're going to want to hear about it and, and get opinions on it and so on and so forth. That's probably not something that non-experts would be terribly interested in. All right, um, and therefore, by further defining to say listeners, not musicians, novices, not experts, that's going to direct me to the goals and the content that I'm going to want to have on this site. All right, now I've defined the organizational goals as follows to broaden the popularity of jazz by educating people, to expand listeners' horizons by introducing them to musicians about which they're not familiar, to give an overview of the whole history of jazz from the beginning until now. In other words, I'm not, my goal isn't to just focus on current musicians, nor is it to just focus on musicians of a particular era of, of the past, of the 40s or the 50s or whatever. Um, my goal is to focus on, again, the whole history. Here's some of the user goals. To find other musicians similar to musicians they already like. All right. In other words, someone that's a novice in jazz music might hear a recording by, say, Bill Evans and say, I like this. I want to hear more like this. All right. To find biographical information about jazz musicians. You know, many jazz musicians, just like People in all walks of life have interesting stories about them. Sometimes it's beneficial to hear a little bit, and it's interesting to hear a little bit about the background of a musician, because sometimes that informs their playing. And lastly, to get information that will assist them in building up a jazz record library. All right. Now, the hope is that these goals overlap some, right? In this case, it's pretty clear that they overlap. By me discussing the history of jazz from beginning till now, and to expand listeners' horizons by introducing them to musicians about which they're not familiar, those things sort of go hand in hand with some of the user goals. Notice that these goals are fo focused towards listeners. They're not focused towards musicians, and they're focused towards novices, not experts in the field. I put letters next to each of them, letters and numbers, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. The first organizational goal I put an 01 next to. 
The second one I put an 02, the third one I put an 03, and then for users I put user U1, U2, and U3. All right. I'm not implying, by the way, that the band U2 are jazz musicians by putting U2 next to, next to that, just in case anyone is wondering. I then have a series of personas where I actually go and make up three people. All right? Now, again, this is sort of the eye rolling time for a lot of people. Like, why would I do this? We do this so that we don't see our users as a bunch of nameless, faceless people out there, but we actually start thinking of them as real people that have characteristics, that have a little bit of story behind them, so that we can really put ourselves in their shoes when we define the goals and when we define all the other things that we're going to put on the, on the page. In fact, I probably should define the personas before I define the goals. That would probably be a better way to do it. All right. So I made up this. Uh, and again, I actually went and got pictures that are licensed by Creative Commons license from that person's website. This guy, I said, listened to jazz music growing up as his father was an avid fan. As he grew up, he stopped listening. Now is he getting older? He is interested in rediscovering the music and learning about contemporary jazz musicians. Next person had a music appreciation class. Doesn't know much about the music, but likes some of the music that they heard in class and wants to be exposed to it. This guy has a few friends that listen to jazz music and has heard some contemporary musicians he likes, but wants to go back in the past and find other musicians like those. When you're trying to decide anything for your site, you should put yourself in the shoes of these personas that you've made up. The goals, the requirements, all these things. Now again, three, despite the song, is not the magic number. All right, Three is what I think is reasonable for the kind of project that you're working on in this class. A lot of people will tell me that, oh, I can't see how I have three personas. I mean, I can only think of one. Well, almost always when we sit down and talk about it, we can come up with a list of three kinds of people that would be interested in visiting the site and getting some information. This allows us to think beyond just sort of the nameless, faceless user that's out there and sort of put a human face on it and help us make some of these design decisions. So that's the strategy phase. That's phase one. An overview, goals, and three personas. The next step is the scope section, also known as the requirements section. And that's where I'm going to list the specific pieces of content that are going to be on this site. And guess what? This content, these requirements, ought to address the goals that I've defined. Right? So in other words, Site web biographies of both contemporary and jazz masters of the past. Well, that addresses this goal, that addresses this goal, that addresses this goal. All right. It addresses several of these goals. Each biography will consist of, and then I go on and I have a list of bullet points, one or two audio clips, links to Amazon for one or two of their best recordings, 
that again to get information that will assist them in forming a, a jazz record library. Now notice again links to Amazon for one or two of their best recordings. I'm not going to send them to and there are, for jazz musicians, people that study this, gigantic pages called discographies, which show every single thing that the person played on from their kindergarten concert through the time that they died. All right? If they were walking past a record studio and muttered something and it got captured on tape, it's going to be documented in that discography. Right? Well, that's not what these novices need. These novices need simply a description of like, hey, if you like Bill Evans, try these couple of records. All right? Point them in the right direction. All right? And in that way, again, you're making it easy for them because then they can look at it and say, okay, I, I listen to a couple of samples of this one on Amazon. Yeah, I like this one. Yeah, this one I don't like so much. And that will assist them in building a jazz record library. That's better than giving a listing of every record that the person recorded on. Because that's going to be hard to sort through. So you're not really servicing a novice's goals by doing that. Bump them in the right direction of their best work and then they can decide how much further they want to get into it. If you show the best couple of records by a musician, Amazon or whatever can take it from there if a person really gets into that particular musician. And so on down the line. Now, I talked about those numbers in a minute, uh, a minute ago. Be sure all goals have some requirements and all requirements relate to goals. You can actually put the goal number next to the requirement if that helps. So for example, I said U3 was assisting the users in developing their jazz record library. Oops. I could put I could put a U3 next to that. Why would I need to do that? I need to do that because of coverage. right? If I design, and if I decide that these are my three most important goals, and I don't have anything on the site that addresses one of those goals, then I miss the boat. right? I said one of the most important things is to help people purchase jazz records and develop a jazz record library, and I don't have any piece of content on the site that helps that, then I, 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 I didn't think the problem through good enough or well enough. The reverse is true, too. If I have content on the pay, on, if I have content in the requirements section that doesn't really relate to any goals, but I think it's neat to put on there, I can probably get rid of it. Right? Why? Because of focus. Because of attention. All right? We want to make sure that the users are very focused and we direct their attention to the stuff that they actually are coming to our site for. All right? As opposed to just bombarding them with data after data after data. It's amazing a lot of times when I speak to people who have websites that I don't think are particularly well designed, I've talked to some folks that developed websites that I don't think are particularly good, and I ask them about a piece of content, they'll say, oh yeah, that's on the site. All you have to do is click on this, click on this, click on this, right mouse on this, do a cartwheel, stand on your head, hold down the control key, and click on this. Yeah, it's there, I guess, but if you can't easily find it, then it's as good as not being there. All right? So we want to be focused. We want to make sure we want to maximize our effectiveness.
by the content that we put on our site, making sure that it addresses our goals. And so what we can do is we can put the goal next to the requirement that fulfills it. And maybe a goal or maybe a requirement fulfills a couple different goals. We can put both the, the numbers next to it. And we can actually do the reverse. We can look at our requirement, our goals, and put the numbers of the requirement next to them. You don't want to have a goal that doesn't have any requirements associated with it. Because if you did that, you're missing the boat. You haven't thought through enough about what content ought to be on your site. The flip side, you don't want to have any content on your site that doesn't address one of your goals. Why put something on there if it's not important to you or the users? All right. And I have people say, yeah, but what does it hurt? You know, more is better. Let's put some stuff. No, that's not the case because anything you add is apt to distract people from the stuff that's there, which is the stuff that satisfies their goals. So, to review, we define our users, we define our goals and our users' goals, then we develop a list of content or requirements that address those goals. And we got to make sure that there's coverage, that each goal has something that addresses it, every piece of content or every requirement we put on the site addresses at least one of the goals. Notice that this is just a blob of content. You're going to have a list and you're going to have a bulleted list of stuff that's on your page or, or it's going to be on your site rather. But I'm not saying like what's on what page. I'm not saying how many pages there are. I'm not saying if there's one page or 15 pages. I just have a list of 15 or so items and you'll have probably about the same, about 15, 20 or so requirements. All right, But I haven't decided how that stuff is going to be organized yet. Is all this going to be on one giant web page? Probably not. Is there going to be a separate web page for each one of these topics? Probably not either. The answer is somewhere in between. I'm going to take and I'm going to organize stuff in a way that I think will make sense for the user. Now, before we look at what I did, how many different ways could I organize the material about jazz musicians? I'll give you one example. All right? And I'm not sure it's a good example or not, but I'll give you one example. Let's brainstorm if we can come up with more. One thing that's always been the case in jazz music is different regions sometimes have different styles. You know, talk about New Orleans jazz music and, and then there's West Coast jazz music that evolved in the 50s and then New York has always been um, important. All right? Now there's, you know, now that jazz has achieved worldwide popularity, there's European and Asian and African and South American musicians that play it. One way that I could organize material on this site is by geographic region. So, organizing my content. I could do it by geographical region. So I could have my home page. Then maybe I have a page for the US, a page for Europe, and the other continents. And under the US I have the jazz hotbeds. New York, New Orleans, Chicago maybe, West Coast, actually Kansas City, so on down the line. And then in doing this then, what I would do is I put the biographies where they belong geographically. In other words, 
Louis Armstrong was associated with the New Orleans style of music, I'd put on the New Orleans section. Um, someone um, like Miles Davis, well, part of his career he was associated with the West Coast sound, but of course he played a lot in New York as well. All right. He came from St. Louis, so maybe I'd put him in the Midwest. I don't know. I'd decide where to put Miles later on. All right. Duke Ellington, yeah, I'd, I'd put him in the New York section. All right. Let's brainstorm of other options. That's one example. And we can discuss later if that's a good, bad, or indifferent example. But that's just one example. What are some other ways that I could organize the content on this site? Alphabetical. I could have my home page. And then I could have, you know, Maybe the A's, maybe the B's, maybe I could have 26 pages. Or maybe I could group them, A through D or, or whatever. All right, so that would be another way to organize it. Okay, we'll call this styles. All right, I have a home page and we could call it like early jazz. Big band. Bebop, and then so on. It's another way. By the instruments they play. Have a home page. Could have, as they say in the UK, saxophonists, piano players, drummers. And so on. What's another way that we could do it? Gender. By gender. Oh, Carla Blay would would probably fist fight you over that one. Billy Holiday. Yeah, Ella Fitzgerald, uh, uh, Joanne Brackeen. Uh, yeah, I mean, all right. Uh, another way. These don't have to be good. These are brainstorming. There's one more kind of obvious one that we missed. Go ahead. Time period. Time period, yeah. Time period. You know, 1920s, 1930s, you know, or 20s and 30s, depending on, on how we want to group it together. Maybe let's do it by 20 year period. 40s and 50s, 60s and 70s, 70s to 90s, and so on. Now, we just spent, I don't know, five minutes thinking about this, right? If even that. And yet, we came up with we came up with six different ways to categorize it. And assuming that none of you are jazz experts, um, which is, might not be a good assumption, I don't know, but we came up with six ways to categorize this, even though we're not necessarily experts in this particular field and don't know a lot about it. Can you imagine if you considered something that you knew a lot about? You could probably find a whole bunch of different ways to categorize it. Now the question becomes, what way should we categorize it? What would be the best way to categorize this stuff? Yes? So you talked about focus. So would we focus in terms of the audience that we're trying to appeal to? Absolutely. 
the statement was is that we answer this question by putting us ourselves in the shoes of our users. So, the question is, not what makes most sense to us, but what makes most sense to Bob, Mary, and Brad, our representative users, and we try to analyze it from that perspective. What is going to help these people? So let's pick. And I'm not picking on any of these. These are all great brainstorming ideas, but let's, let's think about this. Alphabetical. Would that help me find musicians like the musicians that I like? Um, probably not. Maybe on a person's biography I might mention other musicians like them, but that's kind of going to be kind of hard to find. Or if I say, you know what, I really like the way that, you know, I really like Louis Armstrong and that New Orleans style. Well, what letters do New Orleans jazz musicians' last names start with? Well, I don't know. They probably start with all of them. <laughs> all right? Or, gee, I love piano music. I love the way that the piano sounds. How does this help me with that? The answer is it doesn't. Now, to someone that's an expert in the field that may know what biography they're looking for, this might be perfectly good. All right? So, our task is to evaluate from the perspective of our users what the best way to organize it, this is. And that's what's known as the organizing principle. All right? This is where we'll pick up next time. Uh, we're about halfway through the phases. The second half probably goes for quicker than the first half. So, we will definitely wrap this up on Thursday and we will get into then talking about creating a website um, by creating a template and cloning it and what we can do with our visual language to help the user and to guide the user through um, and focus on the content that they need to be focusing on. Questions? All right, we'll see you up in lab.